Uh, I want to talk about some some changes that have been happening in Fedora, uh, and uh, the slides are uh, online. Um, and uh, I'll start with a disclaimer that uh, I'll be talking in a way that um, is from the point of view of system D because I work on system D uh, and uh, often I will use GNOME as an example, uh, which is because I use GNOME myself and I know it uh, relatively well. Uh, but the idea is to um, cre to, to let different uh, desktops and different distributions collaborate. So uh, please treat this as examples, not as as uh, the only only way to do stuff. Uh, and well, I, I want to talk about uh, changes that. Um, connect different components uh, in the distribution. The high level and the low level, um, very high level things like, uh, um, well, the, the GNOME terminal that is in the title and uh, everything in the in between and then very low level things like uh, uh, the kernel, the bootloader, uh, the um, system manager. And uh, um, people, some people say that different things should should be should do separate jobs and shouldn't care too much about each other, and I disagree. Uh, and in this talk, I want to to show uh, some examples of the of things like this that are happening right now, and explain why uh, they are done like this and why I think it's a good thing, and uh, why in the long run. I expect that we will have even more of of such uh, integrations, and um, some of those things are kind of complicated, uh, and the the implementation at the bottom is uh, often uh, quite uh, complex. But uh, I think it's easier to start from the bottom because the stuff that's at the bottom of the of this of stack of components, the low level components, they they usually have a clear goal. And since I'm not talking about the implementation, just about the um, the purpose, then it's easier to start at the bottom and, and go up. So uh, without further ado, let me start with a, a, a something that is called boot blessing. So um, boot blessing is a name that is used in uh, system D. Uh, some Others call it uh, a bit different, uh, but in general, the idea is that the uh, bootloader boots a kernel, and uh, well, assuming that the kernel loaded from disk fine and, and the boot started, the, the bootloader cannot know if the uh, if, if the kernel booted successfully and if the boot uh, was actually useful for the user. So. Um, we need to create a feedback loop and we let the user space uh, that is part of the boot uh, decide if the boot was a good boot uh, and feed this information back to the bootloader. And then the bootloader can take some, some, some action based on this. And uh, we, we have two implementations. Um, since most people um, use Grub, uh, the, there's an implementation in Grab and then a, a competing implementation, maybe, uh, in System D uh, for the System D bootloader as the boot. So, so let me let me talk about the uh, the Grab implementation first. Uh, it's quite simple. It has a a, a counter uh, that when when we start booting, we set. Uh, uh, we, we bump the counter that says that we tried this boot and we don't know yet what the result was, uh, boot uh, indeterminate. And then uh, there is a user service. So uh, a service that, parts, that runs as part of the user session uh, 
that has a very simple job. Um, it con consists of two parts. There's a timer uh, that waits two minutes. And um, uh, after two minutes have passed, the, the timer starts the, uh, the, the service that does the actual uh, um, uh, blessing. And this blessing consists of telling the um, of, of calling a grab binary to set a, a um, grab variable. So, um, I mean, this this is conceptually very simple, uh, and it actually works. Um, this uh, this implementation was approved as part of uh, two changes. I think it was Fedora twenty nine. Uh, hidden grab menu change, and then uh, in Fedora 30 or 31, Flickr free boot, um, and uh, this those this uh, the effect of all this is not, it's not very big because uh, grab uh, just um, hides the boot menu by default and shows it if. Um, the last boot wasn't uh, successful. Um, the competing implementation in system D uh, is more uh, complicated. So uh, system D has this um, uh, uh, um, mm. system D is known for being uh, co of compl for complicating things too much, and this is. Uh, or at least a lot, and this is uh, no different in this case. It also has a uh, a, a service to to bless the boot as um, as successful. Uh, the difference is that this this service uh, mm, works for uh, the SD boot bootloader, not for for grab, uh, and. Uh, um, it also essentially sets sets a variable. I mean, the implementation is different, but the, the effect is very similar. Uh, uh, and um, uh, but that's pretty much all that is similar because the the service is actually started by a, um, a, a is enabled by a generator. So here we have this first point of flexibility that uh, the the service is only uh, active if as the boot was used to boot the machine uh, that may, may be a minor point uh, the, the complexity starts in how this um, service is activated instead of having a, a, a of just saying that the uh, um, service should be part of the transaction uh, statically, uh, we have a um, an in, a level of indirection. We have something called boot complete target, uh, and this target works as a synchronization point uh, between services that do the blessing. So, so the, our example is the the system D bless boot service, which runs after the target. If grab was converted to the scheme, then we would have something like grab. Um, boot success service uh, after this target. On the other hand, before this target, we can uh, put arbitrary uh, services that do um, checks on the boot and, and tell us if the boot was successful. Um, and uh, I mean, this, this is all nice. Except that systemd actually doesn't provide any useful service to run before uh, boot complete target uh, and do a useful check. There is a systemd boot check no failure service that um, does what it what its name says, but that's not, not enough to to figure out if the uh, boot was successful. Um, so uh, let me run through two failure modes. Um, so the first one will be where a kernel crashes uh, in early boot. Uh, and both implementations do the right thing here. They, um, mm, the, the, we mark the boot early 
uh, as, uh, as um, with some appropriate counter and we never get to the phase where we uh, market as successful. Uh, in case of system D, because we, we never uh, complete the transaction successfully. Uh, in case of grab, uh, because we the timer doesn't have enough time to run and we never start the, the service. Um, but let's consider a different failure mode. The, the user logs in, um, but the mouse and the keyboard is broken. This, uh, this can happen, this is nasty. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe, maybe the screen is garbled or something else that causes uh, the user not to be able to use the machine successfully. Well, two minutes pass and the grab um, timer uh, fires and the grab entry is marked as, as good. Um, the system D uh, uh, service does the same thing. It, it, well, I mean, it has the same effect. It, it, everything finishes successfully. All services are started. No errors are reported. Uh, it's just that the session is not useful for the user. And uh, so, so we, ha we have this feedback loop where we um, talk to the bootloader from somewhere in the middle of the stack of things that we start uh, to, to have a, a graphical user session. Um, but I would argue that it's actually too low. What I would like to see is that um, GNOME session itself would uh, be smart enough to figure out that uh, the user is, I don't know, not opening any windows. So maybe the, even though the session started, um, it shouldn't be marked as, as successful. So uh, we want to have feedback from the very highest levels back to the to the very lowest levels. Um, I also want to mention that um, the system D implementation is more uh, complicated in one more way. It does uh, boot counting. So uh, we install a new kernel and we put uh, we decide on some number, three or five, something like that. Um, when the kernel is newly installed and we create the boot entry in the bootloader for it. Uh, and then every time we uh, boot this kernel, we, we increase, uh, we decrease the counter by one. Uh, and once we mark the boot entry as successful, then we stop decreasing it. We set another flag. This allows us to uh, create an automatic um, fallback so that uh, if the, the machine uh, has a new kernel installed, uh, the, the kernel um, is booted a few times without success, we stop booting this kernel, we try to boot, for example, the previous kernel. Then ideally the machine uh, would start successfully with the other kernel, uh, maybe uh, abort would uh, kick in, figure out that something was uh, crashing in the uh, this newest kernel version uh, uploaded to Fedora servers, uh, and then Fedora developers would be able to uh, fix this, uh, and then yet another kernel update that was installed would now work correctly, and the user could have this uh, well uh, auto magic experience where um, the bug is handled automatically and. Um, uh, they don't even need to do anything except maybe uh, uh, press the reset button a few times. But for this to work, we would need to have uh, everything working much more reliably. Um, what we can do right now is that we can uh, show the menu if the boot fails, but doing something as uh, complex as uh, automatically falling back to, to an older kernel uh, it's, we are not there yet, but it's within, um, I mean, we, we pretty much know how to do it. It's just a question of integrating the right, right bits. Mm. The second topic uh, I want to talk about is uh, system D units for the, uh, uh, for the, for the user session. So the, for the, um, Right, I mean, units started by the uh, 
user manager for any given user and not units started by the uh, system manager for the system itself. And what, what has been somewhat quietly happening is that um, uh, GNOME has been slowly converting to this mode where it, uh, where everything that GNOME starts is starting started as separate uh, user units. Um, uh, the the way that it, this this happens in the in the low level implementation in in, in glib um, uh, gnome shell uses glib to to uh, i mean has always used glib to to start uh, processes and now instead of di starting the process directly it uh, does a debug call to to the systemd uh, user instance and uh, tells it about um, a job that needs to to, to run, and um, this lets system D user instance manage the processes. So that's by itself; it doesn't do much. Uh, it's a uh, because uh, the processes are still started uh, and they they run pretty much the same. Uh, system D is not actually doing too much monitoring. Uh, on the other hand, it's a big change because it's a change in philosophy. Uh, the, the low level bits in GLIP need to be changed. There's, uh, I put some merge requests uh, in, the, uh, in the slides. Uh, but the important part is that systemd has this generic infrastructure to manage uh, groups of processes using C groups. And uh, in the long run, this, this will give us a lot of uh, power uh, in how we manage services that are part of the user session. Uh, I wanted to uh, show an example. Uh, so it's a bit unclear, but uh, On Fedora 32, uh, pretty much everything that is started by the mm, user session uh, is already in individual uh, mm, C groups managed by systemd. Um, for example, my Firefox with all its processes using the CPU is in, is in one control group. Uh, I also have a, a, a flat pack instance running Telegram uh, and so on. So um, why, 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 why do we want this to happen? Uh, so three items. Obviously, systemd is uh, very good at keeping track of processes. This is why we have it. Um, Systemd also allows uh, dependencies to be uh, declared between jobs. So uh, finally, instead of trying to, to, to start different uh, processes as part of the graphical session and hoping that we got the order right, we can uh, declare real dependencies. We can declare uh, failure modes. Uh, we can do more stuff in parallel uh, and uh, right. I mean, let's say that we want to start the music player after Pulse Audio has started, um, and by after I mean not just uh, that the Pulse Audio binary has been spawned, but that the Pulse Audio binary uh, has reported to the to the manager that it is ready to handle requests, and this is what systemd does and so far, uh, this was partially duplicated in the graphical environments, but um, well, it's, it is better to do it in systemd. Uh, it actually makes the uh, graphical session a bit simpler. I uh, also want to mention, uh, as an aside, the uh, systemd xdg, so the systemd 
cross desktop group auto start generator. It's a little generator that converts uh, desktop files in the auto start directory uh, into systemd user unit um, system the user session units and uh, uh, it's it's a pretty pretty cool thing so so we'll have this this mode where we will be able to start uh, things as part of um, the uh, graphical session auto start and actually use dependencies for them and error handling and stuff uh, but the, the third reason uh, is that we can res assign resources to control groups. Uh, and I want to talk about this because this is this has been a really big subject in Fedora recently. So a short reminder, how the kernel uh, manages resources for control groups. Uh, in the C groups V2 world, uh, we have high level controllers. Uh, CPU, memory, I.O. are the, the three important ones. Um, and uh, one of the, the changes from before is that those controllers uh, try to provide a simplified, even if not simple, uh, interface to the user space and, uh, and hide all the complexity underneath. Um, so. Uh, before there were many more controllers and there were many more knobs. Now we have a, a much simplified view of this. Uh, there are um, weights and limits. So uh, weights are uh, for stateless resources, like for example, CPU. And they, they we can specify that we want to divide the CPU at any given time with some weight between different uh, tasks. Uh, and uh, there are limits which specify how much of a given resource can be used, which is mostly useful for uh, stuff like memory, where we say this, uh, the users, this, I don't know, the, the, the graphical session should not use more than two gigabytes of memory or whatever. Uh, and uh, we have limits which limit from the top and we have uh, protections uh, which um, kind of do the opposite. If a unit is below its uh, protection level for a given resource, uh, the, this resource will be taken away from other units uh, before it is taken from this protected unit. Uh, and uh, uh, the two, two, two obvious examples of this is, uh, is uh, the uh, mm, uh, well, okay, sorry. The, the, and a good example of this of, of, of protection is this change that was merged for Fedora 33, which is the um, uh, uh, micro resource D daemon, which will set the uh, protections for the active user session. I will return to this in a moment. Uh, so we have all those settings for, I mean, all this kernel magic. Uh, and systemd exposes it uh, for its interface. Uh, so we, we, the graphical session can talk to systemd uh, using dbus, and dbus can talk to the kernel, set the appropriate kernel knobs. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, emphasize that this is kind of similar to this to this previous case. Um, the kernel is doing uh, the, the low level job in this case it's 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 very good at managing resource allocations but the kernel doesn't know it and cannot know uh, what processes are important to the user how to divide the resources uh, so so we, we need to have high level uh, components uh, that run as part of the user space and that that feed information back to the to the lower layers, and uh, uh, one example uh, is the U uh, resource D or micro resource D. Uh, it sets the um, uh, um, protections 
for memory, CPU, uh, and I/O uh, for the active session. So it watches which uh, which session which session in the sense of uh, the login session uh, is active, and and reserves I don't know 250 megabytes of memory for the for the for the desktop, uh, and. Uh, the, the kernel cannot ever do this because it doesn't have a concept of uh, that would allow it to tie the um, display manager and the, the GNOME shell and, and various parts that form the session uh, that this large group of processes is uh, together important uh, and um, so, so this information needs to come from from the, from the higher layers. Uh, another change that that is that is actually already happening in Fedora 32 is the introduction of uh, early UMD. Uh, and uh, for some, for various reasons, some people are very unhappy with this uh, because they 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 think that um, it should be enough to have the the kernel umkiller. Uh, but uh, the kernel umkiller, first of all, it doesn't know, um, I mean, it, can, it has some heuristics, but it cannot ever know uh, which job at any given moment is the most important for the user. Uh, and when we have sessions where people log in and then log out and leave some jobs behind, uh, this, create, this it creates this um, dynamic state, which 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 is too complicated for the kernel to manage. First of all, and second, uh, the umkiller in the kernel, uh, its job is to to protect the kernel and to to make sure that uh, stuff is happening. So, if we uh, try to I don't know if if, if we open too many Firefox tabs and the machine. Uh, is swapping heavily from the point of view of the kernel uh, work is being done all the time, all the time. so um, everything is fine but of course for the user who can see how the cursor slowly jumps around on the screen this is not uh, very useful so, so we need to have uh, some component in in the user space which uh, helps the kernel do the the job uh, and this is this is a common theme right uh, and uh, in all those cases that are uh, mm, that, that are actually uh, flexible enough to to handle the, the user cases that we want we have this interaction of uh, high-level components uh, with the middle layer, uh, because uh, the high-level components, they first of all, they, they shouldn't um, talk directly to, to, we don't want the, our GNOME shell to, uh, to talk to the bootloader directly. We want to have some intermediate helper uh, which is usually systemd or various uh, helper services. Uh, mm, also, the users, uh, the, the top level components, they don't have permissions. Uh, um, but uh, and this, 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 those middle, middle, uh, this intermediate layer in the middle, it needs to be um, flexible enough to. Uh, Accommodate various use cases. Uh, on the other hand, um, the implementation itself uh, needs to be done at the low level. Uh, for example, in the case of the bootloader uh, and boot blessing, it's the, the bootloader itself that must do the um, counting because uh, the the boot sequence can can be aborted at any point in time so uh, we must set the appropriate counters before we I mean as early as possible and similarly for the for the um, resource allocation stuff the accounting needs to be done in the kernel 
uh, so that it works as a it, it, that it's always in place that, that the machine never hangs even if there's a sudden spike uh, any any kind of user daemon can always be um, uh, overwhelmed uh, and also the kernel is the place where the accounting can be done uh, efficiently enough um, and uh, the kernel is the place which can uh, react quickly enough and uh, some people say that this is a violation of uh, Unix principles uh, and in a way it is um, so and in a way it's not so it is not in the sense that we do have things that are doing one thing and uh, well they're doing it well or at least better than before uh, if we let the uh, system d user session uh, um, manage jobs and we remove this this handling from um, from the graphical environment we simplify the graphical environment and let uh, well actually uh, split split uh, how things are done on the other hand uh, the linux environment as a collection of little processes that 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 uh, don't really care about each other and only do one thing and don't communicate uh, well this is this is going in exactly the opposite direction uh, uh, and uh, I'm saying that if we want if we want to build solutions that are uh, featureful enough we, we will need to go even further in this direction uh, and I want to underline the fact that uh, in some way um, all of this was possible before I mean even 15 years ago we could write a, a script that would set some uh, the user would click an icon on the desktop and this would launch some script and the script would do some job uh, but those were ad hoc solutions if we want to have um, systems that are reliable that are uh, flexible and, and support many 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 use cases we need more and more uh, flexibility and more and more more um, uh, features in the uh, in this middle plumbing layer that provides uh, that connects the um, the high levels which set the policy and the 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 low level implementations that that do the actual job mm. and uh, mm. well that's that's what I wanted to say about what what, is, what has been happening up to now, uh, and uh, as the last uh, few, uh, um, what, what what will happen in this area in the future? So um, we um, when we look at the the way that the user session is managed, it is undergoing a similar transformation as that which happened for system services with the introduction of system d so we will have this this uh drawn out process where we uh, parallelize things where we uh, figure out what are the dependencies between different uh, services that's that run as part of the user session and then we figure out what uh, resources are needed to um uh, to, to 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 keep various services running and and the introduction of uh, early umd and uh, micro resource d it's probably just the first step uh, and uh, we will most likely uh, introduce uh, system d umd in system d so uh, there will be a, a daemon which will um whose job will be to uh, kill stuff when there is not enough memory he itself will probably uh, take over part of the job done by uh, micro resource d uh, and uh, possibly set protections 
I think that that's those are the the um, I mean login D is probably the right place to do this kind of thing. Uh, one thing that will be uh, different uh, in UMD is that UMD uh, responds to the uh, live information uh, from the kernel about pressure on resources. So um, uh, instead of just looking at how much is used, we, we can look uh, at uh, how much the over um, allocation of resources is slowing things down. Uh, I don't want to talk about the details. I just want to say that uh, uh, instead of uh, having a policy that we kill things when the system is running out of in, out of memory for some definition of that, we uh, we can do things like um, you know kill a background processing task which we know for, for a policy set by the user uh, that is unimportant when there is any kind of slowdown. Or we, we could say that uh, tasks like the user session, the graphical user session, should be protected at all costs. Um, but we have even more fancy solutions possible. We can uh, freeze tasks using the the, uh, the freezer when there is memory pressure, uh, or maybe freeze tasks when the user logs in. Uh, I mean, the future is open. Uh, and uh, there are really interesting things happening. Um, the, the fact that Fedora 33 has so many changes in so many different directions, it's, I don't think it's an accident. I think we are uh, at a point in time where we can do really interesting things. Uh, and uh, the good part is that this is done through uh, cross-desktop uh, cooperation and, and cross-distro cooperation from the beginning. Uh, we shouldn't uh, have the situation where different desktops re-implement the same bits uh, in slightly different ways. Uh, and uh, um, I don't know, I, I think that this will allow us to, to build a more reliable and more featureful uh, um, uh, graphical uh, workstations and, and other kinds of systems uh, and I don't know that's that's pretty much what I had to say uh, they forget anything important I don't know probably not I don't know if there are any questions then uh, uh, I, I wasn't uh, watching the the chat too much sorry uh, so please please ask questions in the chat if, if there's still a few minutes Um, are there any plans to support other bootloaders? So uh, maybe I didn't make this clear enough. The um, the boot blessing framework is uh, flexible enough to to support, you know, I mean, easily support any kind of bootloader if a uh, implementation for this bootloader is provided. So this part is uh, this part is easy. Um, on the other hand. Systemd itself will not provide uh, support for other bootloaders. There is this this implementation for SD boot, uh, and uh, I mean it is already too much to, for for systemd. I guess if if we it shouldn't be part of systemd actually. Um, so yes and no. Uh, okay, and so if there are no more questions, uh, I will uh, I will finish before mosquitoes kill me. 